As a trailblazing visionary, you have the power to lead others towards the future. But there isn't just one way to lead. Whether you're a quiet thinker, a collaborative encourager, or a competitive goal slayer, we all have unique strengths that make us great leaders. So what's your leadership style? Take my exclusive quiz and find out. Knowing your style can help you dive deeper into your strengths and build them up even further. And you can do that by going to drrobinmckay.com forward slash leadership quiz. After all, the world needs more of what makes you shine. Don't miss out on this opportunity to unlock your full potential. Hey, and let's shake things up a little bit. Take a screenshot of your results, post them on social media and tag me in your posts so I can see what you got and even amplify your results so more people know exactly what your leadership strengths are. I'm looking forward to seeing your results. And I can't wait to read all about your insightful approaches and how you're leading with your greatness. So today, as we dive in, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm talking about being in business for 10 years. 10 years ago in June, I walked into my supervisor's office at the university and slid my letter of resignation over her desk and resigned my position as psychologist. She was a little bit surprised. I remember her being surprised by my decision, but also very supportive of what I wanted to do with my life at that point. And you know, one of the things that held me to the university for so long is I had all of these people who I cared about. I had students who I was working with. And part of me was like, maybe I should wait until this first cohort of students graduates from the academy that I had helped to start. And then I had this one moment where I thought, how dare I teach these young people to follow their dreams, to go for what their heart's desires were, if I wasn't willing to do the same thing. So that was really the deciding point for me. And when I made the leap, I really never looked back. I will not, I will say that it was not without stress and it was not without uncertainty for sure. But this time, 10 years ago, I was packing to go to Paris to launch my business, to have a photo shoot, and to call in my first international clients. That's what's so remarkable. 10 years ago, I was doing that. And in the first six months of my business, I had generated $100,000 in sales. In the second six months, another 100K in sales. And away I went, I thought, but you know, business has its ups and downs. And when you're a spiritual leader running a business that you know, nobody ever taught me how to run a business in grad school, that was something I had to figure out on my own. And with the help of wise coaches and people who had been doing, it, doing that a little bit longer than I had, I came out of burnout, and in some ways, a professional nosedive um, as my business started to languish because I was burned out. And so what I want to do today in honor of this 10-year anniversary, so weird to say that, but yes, it is 10 years, is I was guided to channel my business. This is, after all, the podcast becoming the channel. And while I talk a lot about channeling wealth consciousness, which is a frequency, I do want to spend some time today talking with my business and letting it, from its perspective, share with you the highs and lows and the lessons and the, the things that we wish we would have known early on. And maybe that can help you as well. That's my, that's my hope. That's my intention is that you don't have to actually go through all the things that I went through. You can just learn from me, apply it and move on. You don't have to, you don't have to have the experiences. You can just learn the lessons vicariously through me. I'm a three, five generator in human design. And, and that three, five is about being a role model and being sort of the one who is out pushing the edges and going out and doing stuff and coming back and telling the people about what happened and how things happened all in the service of allowing you to not have to go through the things that I experience. You can just 
sit back with your popcorn and <laughs> in some ways watch the show, uh, live and learn from my experiences. And that's my hope for you today. So uh, give me just a second and let me just call up my the consciousness of my business here and then we'll go ahead and dive in. So my business consciousness is here. I always imagine the consciousness of my business being much like the fire drake from Deborah Harkin's series, the, the, the name escapes me at the moment. It's something about witches totally escaped me as I was tuning in here. Um, discovery of witches. There we go. And the fire drake was the main character's familiar, the, the being who's always with her, who's helping her, guiding her, protecting her, and so on. And that's much how, I, how I've always thought about my business as well. I remember when my business came to me, it was actually 10 full years before I incorporated my business, about three years before I started really going in earnest in my business. It started with business cards to no great surprise. At that time, it was, I think, 2008. We didn't have social media. We didn't have big platforms, anything like that. It was still very bare bones. I think we had YouTube and Facebook, and that was about it in my space, but, you know, whatever. And um, so I started just with business cards, and I started offering readings and Reiki sessions and doing neo interpretations, which is something that I still do to this day. But my business came to me all those years ago in my tiny cottage in rural Missouri, in the, in the hills really of Missouri, outside of Columbia, where I was living for the year for my postdoc to write my dissertation, didn't have cable, didn't have internet, very bare bones basic. Uh, it was a cottage that was built, I think in the 1940s. And, um, such a precious time. It was such a precious time. And my business came to me then. I remember that. Um, and so since then, you know, obviously a lot has changed. I think back then I was charging like $75 for my Reiki sessions and my readings. And that was a lot because even with my PhD on my postdoc, I think I was making like $12 an hour or something like that. And then when I moved to Arizona, after I finished my postdoc, I went into teaching spiritual development at one of the um, healing arts colleges here in the Valley. And I increased my rates for my private sessions to $125 an hour, which again was a big extension from what I was making even at the university. Um, but you know, the, the, the business of, of my spiritual practice, I'll say, was spotty at best. It was something that I felt like I was doing a lot of heavy lifting with. Um, I wasn't making a whole lot of money from it. And I was really quite occupied with my work at the university as a young psychologist, as I was getting my feet under, my, under me there. And I was developing my women in science and engineering program. My business was always kind of running parallel to my career. So the first logo design for my business came in in 2009, and it was called Smart Girl Modern Goddess, which I still love, and I actually really love the logo as well. My first website I developed back then, and I thought I had to have all of these bells and whistles before I could actually do my work. And I think that as I reflect on that and I tune into my business now, I think one of the things that I wish that I would have understood is that you really don't need a whole lot to start your business. And there are a lot of externals, a lot of superficial things that people say that you need in order to start your business that you really don't need. You don't necessarily need a website. A lot of businesses, even mine today, my executive coaching practice in particular is largely referral based. The women engineers chat with, with each other about who's worked with me and who needs to work with me and for whom it's time to work with me. Um, and in the circles that I'm in, I have a lot of trusted allies and colleagues who are at the multi-six, seven, and even eight-figure marks who refer clients to me. So referral is a big piece of the puzzle. And, you know, listen, the world of entrepreneurship has changed since I 
conceptualize the business to start with since the business came to me. But I think that that's one of the barriers, even now, if you're starting a business or thinking about starting a business that has a spiritual or transformational focus, is that you think you have to do all of these things first. You think you have to check all the boxes first in order to actually go out and do your work. And the truth is quite the opposite. The matrix would want you to think that you have to check all the boxes before you can do the thing. But in the etheric, which is where I channel from, which is where I create from, in the etheric, which is where my business is located, all of those things can be happening simultaneously. And even in reverse order, you can just do your work. And along the way, build your website. And along the way, do the other things. And the reason that I'm getting at this is because one of the beliefs is that you have to spend money in order to make money. That you have to sometimes even go into debt in order to pay for the business. And that is one of the things I wish that somebody would have told me all those years ago, or that I would have figured out. But this is something that I want to pass on to you today is that you actually don't have to go into business. You don't have to go into debt to have a thriving business. And you can ask the business and intend the business will support itself as fast as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't invest in yourself and you don't invest in your business, but it does mean that you set up the expectation that you get the ROI on your investments as fast as possible and as effort, effortlessly as possible. See, I didn't know that. And it was one of those things I kept on thinking that if I just invest and I keep investing that eventually I'll have invested enough that that will come back to me because I didn't understand the energetics of sacred reciprocity. And I think I was more embedded in the old school matrix energy of, you know, you just have to work really hard and do all the work and eventually that will pay off. And the shift that you're being encouraged to make from me and from my business is to shift from you do all the work, you invest all the money, and eventually it will pay off to collapsing time and space so that it pays off effective immediately, so that you get your return in a sacred way effective immediately, so that the money that you invest in the business comes back to you. And in the the sacred conversations and connections that you have with your business, you can actually tell the business what your expectations are. And the business will be more than happy to rise to that. Because here's the thing that I've realized and recognized about working in a spiritual business is that because the, the business has a consciousness, it's going to be responsive to your requests and it's going to be responsive to how you see it. In other words, it's a little bit of a reflection about how you see business and it's going to morph into how you see it. So if you shift how you see business, that it doesn't have to be a time suck, that it doesn't have to be a money suck, but instead that it can be a thriving, living, expanding organism that more than pays for itself, that's where you're going to find your sweet spot, even as you're starting business or regardless of wherever you are in business, you might be in business just beginning, or you might be more seasoned like I am. But I think that that's one of the great lessons from this last 10 years is recognizing that I don't have to wait for an extended period of time to see a return on my investments, that those, those returns can back, come back very, very quickly and in surprising and miraculous ways. So for example, whenever I've invested in a business coach, since I learned that this particular principle of the sacred reciprocity and calling back the ROI as fast as possible, um, I've gotten referrals from the very coach who I hired for people to work with me that have more than paid for my investment in coaching. I didn't expect that, but that's how it came through. So there are a lot of different ways that you can expect your return on investment that don't have to do with you working really, really hard and having to wait a really, really long time in order to bring about the 
reciprocity that you're in business for. And the second thing that the business wants you to know is that you're in business. You are not a charity. You're not doing this out of the goodness of your heart. I mean, we are because we always do things out of the goodness of our hearts, but the business is here to make money. The business is here to be successful. And the business is here to invite you to rise into your own level of success that will match it. The business will not drop down to your level. And here's something interesting. This is what's coming through. If you are failing in business, chances are quite good that you have not risen up to the frequency of your business vision that you are still playing in the, in the little kid's playground, that you're treating the business like it's a hobby or like it's something that you do on the side or you're not taking the business seriously. I think one of the things that you can do to collapse time and space around the success of your business is to take yourself and your business very seriously. Your business is here for serious work. It's here for transformation. It is not here to hide in the shadows and it is not here to play small. It is here to make a difference. It is here to be a bridge on the ascension journey to the new earth. And if you are not taking that seriously, if you are not taking yourself seriously, if you do not believe in yourself and if you do not believe in your business, that is a chief cause of failure. In fact, you have to believe in your business and yourself more than anybody else believes in you. It is good to have people around you who believe you, who believe in you, but belief in yourself, belief in your business, that is an inside, that is an inside job. That is the thing that will make or break your success. If you are called into a spiritual business, you are called to express and experience your spiritual gifts through the vehicle of the business. You are not here to be a wounded healer. You are not here to be a poor healer that gets you know, chickens in exchange for healing. That's not the way it works anymore. And it hasn't for generations actually. that making money is actually a spiritual journey. It's part of your spiritual path. And the business is here to assist you on your spiritual path, to express your spiritual gifts, to express and amplify your energetic capabilities, your superpowers, to bring about transformation, to create results for yourself and for your clients. That is what the business is here for. And it is just waiting in the wings for you to rise to it, to believe it, to believe yourself. Even if other people choose not to, even if other people have no idea what you're doing, which was my case, I endured a lot of criticism from my friends in the psychology community. What is she doing? Why is she writing about these things? Why is her marketing going this way? It was not fun, but I kept on going because I knew what I was doing. And I required myself to keep going, even though other people around me didn't understand what I was doing. Because I knew I was helping people. I was calling in the clients who were meant to work with me, who were meant to experience the transformation, the magic. And that mattered more to me than what the head of the department at the University of Kansas thought about what I was doing, for example. I'm just tuning into seeing what else the business is wanting to share.
So my business in human design is a non-specific manifester, meaning that it just wants to feel a certain way. I am, on the other hand, a specific manifester. I have vision and I see what I want, but when it comes to working with my business, I have to honor the non-specific manifester that it is, meaning I have to ask the question, how do you want to feel? And the business always wants to feel expansive and free, unworried, unhurried, joyful, sparkly, dynamic. And the business, my business, doesn't necessarily care so much about what the offer is as much as it cares about how it wants to feel because its nature is all of those things, dynamic, expansive, joyful, sparkly. And it wants to feel that. It just wants to feel its true nature. And I think we can learn a lot about ourselves and our, from our businesses because who doesn't want to feel that? Who doesn't want to feel free and expansive? And then my human self, who's a specific generator, has a vision for what I want to create my legacy. And that's what I'm working on now is creating legacy projects. Because between my business and me in the last 10 years, we've accomplished so many of the goals that we set out. I live in a beautiful home. I met my divine life partner on this journey. I've paid off debt. We get to travel and work. I drive a lovely car. I have a beautiful wardrobe. I have a fun loving spirited dog. Like I have all of these things. And I'm so glad that I had the experience of receiving all those things as a result of who I was becoming in the process. And now I've reached a point where this is all about legacy. And my business can sigh into that, can lean into that. What does legacy feel like? It feels expansive, sparkly, like diamonds in the sky. So when you're in partnership with your business, you are in a lifelong relationship with it. And it is a dance. And you honor the dance by honoring the relationship, by understanding the other party in the relationship. One of the major questions that I get asked a lot from spiritual entrepreneurs and those who are really on the spiritual journey, but know that they're meant to have a business as well. They tell me they feel so lost. I don't know what to do next. I feel so lost. But when you come back into understanding that the business is here to make money, you are here to be a bridge to the new, new earth through your ascension modalities and methods and energetics. And you are here to be of high service to the people that you're meant to serve. That can be your true north. That can be enough to be your true north. But anytime you find yourself flailing around in the, I don't know what to do next. And I don't know where to get started. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It really is a giving up of your personal power and it's, I'm looking for the right word here to describe, what word would you describe? It's disappointing to the business that you're not showing up in your fully mature, responsible, psychologically minded way that would say, even though I don't know the answer right now, I know that there is a solution. So I said a little bit earlier that one of the great challenges is not taking yourself or your business seriously, not believing in yourself. Another is not managing your nervous system. The business consciousness is always calm, cool, and collected. It's steady, eddy. It's a flow. It's like Niagara Falls with the flow. If your physical body is not able to handle the steady flow of Niagara Falls going through it, you're going to burn out. You're going to get yourself into trouble. 
by saying something you shouldn't, by making a decision that is dumb or costs you a lot of money. And we do that anyway, along the way. But um, managing your nervous system, making sure your nervous system is resilient and healthy, making sure your vagus nerve is calm and soothed and the tone is good for it. These are the things that are very important for you to thrive with your business. And ultimately, what I have found for most spiritual entrepreneurs, myself included, is that our businesses just really want to have fun and be in joy. And yet we as humans take the work so seriously and we put all of our, our hopes and our dreams and our fears and we project all of this nonsense onto the business. And if we could just let the business be the business and enjoy it for what it is. I don't have kids. I have a dog and I find myself sometimes projecting onto him, onto Cooper, uh, my fears, my worries, my concerns. And I do the same thing with my business, not so much anymore, but I did definitely in the past, the projections of, am I going to be able to do this? I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just going to try it and see if it'll work. And I really took kind of a laissez-faire approach to doing business early on especially when I got burned out. At that point, I was like, oh, let me just do the bare minimum in order to keep the business afloat because I'm so exhausted. And I don't have, at the time, I didn't have the financial resources to really, really shore it up with the adequate support that it required. And I think that when we really look at the nervous system, when we look at our well being, our mental health, our psychological well being, these are the things that make a big difference in terms of how well you're going to be doing in your business long term. And then there are some things that I'm really glad that I learned right off the bat as I was starting my business, because I did take myself seriously enough to know that I needed some training that I didn't have. Like they didn't teach me how to run a business in grad school, they taught me how to do really good therapy to understand evidence-based and empirically supported treatments, right? To develop psychological theories, to do clinical assessments. They taught me all the, the technical stuff, but I didn't know how to run a business for sure. So one of the things that I knew I had to learn is how to sell high ticket and how to do so without being salesy or pushy or cheesy like a used car salesman. And I mastered that pretty quickly. And it's something that if you haven't yet already mastered, it is something that you really do. You really are being asked to and invited to require of yourself in order to make the most of the business. Because the low ticket stuff is not going to make nearly the impact, at least at first in your business, that the high ticket stuff will. And the clients who you call in on the high ticket as well are going to be very different from those who are buying the, you know, $33 and $47 offers. And by high ticket, I mean anything at this point over $1,000 is probably the minimum of high ticket. So learning how to sell to high ticket was really a key to my early success. And in fact, when I talk about wealth consciousness, we talk about three different areas, the ability to attract, receive, and hold wealth. And I was really good at the first two. I was really good at attracting wealth, attracting money into my business. I was really good at receiving it. In other words, closing the deal and having the money come into my bank account. What I sucked at, oh, sucked at was holding it. I treated money like it was a hot potato. In part, it was a trauma response that I had to work through and get support with. Um, in part, it was Money blindness, I have ADHD and money blindness is actually a thing. I didn't want to look at the money. I just wanted it to be in my account and for me, for me to be able to go and get it and use it when I needed to and not have to have to look at it or be responsible for it. So that was a big area of growth for me is the holding piece, the energetics of holding, but the, also the psychology of holding money and to be able to live from the, the excess, to always have a, a supply 
to live from the overflow of the supply in my bank account rather than scraping the bottom of the barrel in my bank account, which I used to do kind of frequently actually, living paycheck to paycheck, being in feast or famine as an entrepreneur. These are all things that I grew very familiar with early in the business. And I think the business got real tired of me, to be honest. It started providing the bare minimum as well, mostly because that's all I could handle of it at that time with the burnout and the stress that I was experiencing as a single person with no backup plan. I didn't feel very supported. And what I came to learn is that I had to feel very supported in order to feel safe enough to, to grow my business to the extent that I have and to expand into what's next as well. And safety is, it's again, it's one of those inside jobs. You can always get support from people like me and my coaches as well. I worked with, worked and have worked with Jennifer Longmore for years at this point, five years, I think I've been working with her. And it's always a growth process to holding more and more and more wealth and allowing yourself to feel worthy and deserving of the money that's sitting in your bank account when it is, and to not worry about it going away or somebody wanting to take it back, be mad at you and take it back or whatever it is. Um, and the business, from the business's perspective, I think that it withdrew a lot of its essence from my life at that time, simply because I wasn't available for it. I was so tired and traumatized. And I had a lot of, I had a lot of stuff going on emotionally and psychologically that I had to address in order for me to be healthy enough to lean into what was next for my business, to find the right mentor who had walked the path ahead of me, who I knew was smart enough and psychologically mature enough to work with me on the things that were deep-seated, deep-seated traumas that were coming forward as an expression in the business. So when I think about the person I've become the last 10 years, a lot of it is thanks to being in business for myself. I don't think that had I stayed in the corporate space, I would have had nearly the growth or the experience and certainly not the financial reward that I have had over the last 10 years. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to work with as many amazing people as I have been able to, or travel as much as I have, or to have the, the level of experiences that I've had in the business world. It would have been a safer route, I'm sure, but I'm a risk taker and maybe you are too. And you know, there's a cost when you're a risk taker. It's sort of like flying too close to the sun. Sometimes you get singed, sometimes you get burned. But the journey, the journey is so remarkable. And as I turn and face the future, the next phase of the journey, the legacy phase, really, of this journey, I am glad that I have my business with me. We still have a lot of growing to do. I don't always trust it. I worry a lot. It's kind of baked into my personality profile. I'm a worrier. Um, and the business just continues to invite me to lean into and, you know, the business just told me the other day, you would worry less if you would just do the things that you agreed to do. So one of the things that is my area of growth is keeping promises to myself. When I say I'm going to do something, I just get it down on paper and I do it. And I believe that the program is going to fill and I believe that the people are going to show up. It is that belief in myself. It is the belief in my business that is going to carry me through the next chapter in my life with my business. And maybe it'll carry you through yours as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out for today. Thanks for joining me. If you would like to connect with me about working together as a spiritual entrepreneur who's on your journey, I would be happy to have a conversation with you about that. You can start that conversation by booking a consult with me, you go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash call. It gets you on my calendar. We send you over an intake form so I can understand your business, understand who you are and make sure that I can 
support you in some way. If I feel that I can, when we chat, I'll make some recommendations on how we can work together. It could be as simple as doing a two hour Akashic Records for business reading on your business or um, as extensive as doing a year long business development program for spiritual entrepreneurs or anything in between as well. So if that's something that feels aligned for you, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Again, just go to Dr. Robin McKay forward slash call and start the process by booking a call and I will see you next time.